Welcome to your Canadian Law Personal Trainer, episode number two. Ooh, that one was loud. Okay, welcome everybody. You know what we're doing today? We're taking up assignment number nine, evidence in a criminal trial. And so each of the three questions that you were given, uh, you had to take a look at them and you had to pretend that it's people in a witness box and they gave some kind of statement what kind of statement did they make? All right, the first question, number one. I've known Michael most of my life, and I could never imagine him raising his hand to anyone. Uh, you had to take your trusty book. Remember your trusty book? Learning About Law. And you had to open up to page 200 to 201. Uh, and there's six types of uh, evidence in this book. Six types. If you didn't bring your book home, well, I know, I don't know why you wouldn't. It's a beautiful book and it's light and you would have wanted some great reading over the March break. Uh, but if you didn't bring it home, I attached those proper pages to the bottom of my post. And so you had to read those pages. I don't think some people did. Uh, all right. So what type of evidence is this? This one is character evidence. That's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and you had to write 25 or words or more. Listen. Uh, if you didn't do well on assignment number nine and you, or maybe you did well, but you want to do better, you got the assignment number 10. I'm going to be marking harder. So make sure you're taking notes right now. I'll wait for you to get a piece of paper and a pen. Just kidding. I'm not waiting. You can pause the video. Uh, so I've known Michael most of my life and I could never imagine him raising his hand to anyone. Yes, that's character evidence. Uh, the second question now, is it admissible? You can't just say, yeah, I think it's admissible. Yeah, it sounds like it's someone standing up for him. It's admissible. You got to read the book. You got to read the book and you got to tell me why you think it's admissible according to the pages 200 and 201. Uh, is character evidence admissible? It's not admissible if the Crown presents character evidence first. That's what it says right in here. Uh, uh, character evidence is only admissible if the defense brings it up first. Uh, the Crown can attack someone's character uh, only if the defense brings that up as an issue. And so that's what you'd say, because obviously this is uh, a statement made by the defense. And so uh, this would be admissible. And what kind of testimony is this, direct or circumstantial? Can I tell you that? And here's a clue, which you're gonna do assignment number 10. And th this is definitely gonna be on our final exam. Just kidding, we're not doing a final exam. Uh, is it uh, direct or circumstantial? Almost all evidence is circumstantial. Very, very few are uh, direct. So it's almost like you'd say that circumstantial is kind of the default, and then you take a look, see, could it be direct? This is circumstantial, it's not direct. It does not have a direct link uh, did this person know if Michael did anything bad? Uh, did Michael kill someone? This person doesn't know. He's just saying, well, I can't imagine him doing that. That is circumstantial evidence. Uh, all right, question number two. I was interviewing the mayor, and when I replayed it, I saw something strange. Is this recorded evidence? No, it's not recorded evidence. Look at the book. I'm looking at the book. The, the book the pages, which are on your computer too. Photographic and recorded evidence, that's what it's called. That's the type of evidence, that's the category, that's what we want, photographic and recorded evidence. Uh, and then you explain why in 25 words or more. Uh, that's easy to do. B, is it admissible? Photographic and recorded evidence, is it admissible? Uh, there are two reasons, two things you gotta look at. And you gotta make reference to the book. Have I said that before already? You gotta make reference to the book. Okay, yeah, go, go, go Saints. Uh, you gotta make reference to the book. Do you remember way back when we were talking about uh, the Code of Hammurabi? And do you remember when we were looking at that booklet and uh, someone like uh, Raul struck his father in a fit of anger? Uh, what should happen to Raul according to the Code of Hammurabi? You don't just say, oh, Code of Hammurabi, well, they respect their fathers, and so, yeah, they would, uh, he would be punished. No, I wanted you to go and find the exact part in the Code of Hammurabi and prove it. Just like, imagine if we did a mock trial, if we ever got back to school and we did a mock trial. Uh, mock trials are fun. and But a Crown Attorney steps up and can't say, Your Honor, Bubba did it. No, you got to have proof. And so here you got to prove this. You got to say that uh, recorded evidence is admissible if 
the people filmed did not have a reasonable expectation of privacy uh, and that the photographic or recorded evidence has not been tampered with and so those are two big considerations and here uh, it's an inter interview with the mayor so he does not have a reasonable expectation of privacy uh, and we have no evidence that it's been tampered with so this would be admissible is this recorded photographic and recorded evidence direct or circumstantial uh, direct or circumstantial uh, almost always photographic recorded evidence is direct it's it's like an eyewitness but it's exa an exact recording of what an eyewitness uh, saw so this is direct evidence all right are we ready for number three remember if you're going to do assignment number 10 i'm going to mark it more difficult so be ready are you taking notes uh, number three my mom's last words were bubba did it uh i like the fact that this one's easy because it's here the answer is hearsay and i like it because obviously this person heard his mother say it that's why it's hearsay hearsay is i heard someone say it uh and so this is hearsay evidence you got to describe in 25 words or more why it's hearsay evidence is this admissible in court almost always hearsay evidence is not admissible only it's only admissible if it can meet two conditions as it says in the book uh, you got to read the book and tell me exactly uh just demonstrate that you have read the book hearsay evidence is only admissible uh when it meets two criteria if it were the dying last words of a dying person that's one and here uh isn't the question doesn't it say well i gotta scroll back up here i gotta scroll back up my uh, my mama's last words were bubba did it so it is the last words of a dying person but also it's got to meet another condition that other condition is if that person who died would have been able to say it uh in a courtroom if the if it was if they were allowed to say it in a courtroom uh so here yeah, i guess you could say yeah that person would have been allowed to say it you, you don't know uh so i'd say admissible uh and uh the last part of that question uh is it direct or circumstantial hearsay evidence is never direct it's never direct it's circumstantial it's circumstantial very very few things are direct uh remember that uh, it's almost always circumstantial did we do all the three questions yes we did uh so you've got uh about well it's due friday at 3 p.m if you choose to do uh assignment number 10 which is kind of like assignment number nine do over if you didn't do assignment number nine you got to do assignment number 10 it's going to be an average of the two marks all right that's it for now uh, this concludes your canadian law personal trainer episode number two see you next time